Hey, what's up guys, it's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're gonna create an impactful logo animation. This week we're gonna create this animation. There's a bunch of steps, so let's get started. Right, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna animate our logo box here. We're gonna animate the box, shooting down, hitting the surface, and having like a little bit of an impactful bounce. And then as it does that, there's gonna be a bunch of other stuff happening. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this box. And you can see I've already done that. So I essentially just animated it straight down to the surface, and then it hits and bounces. And you can see it's kind of going into the surface a little bit. That's kind of intentional because I'm going to crack the surface here so that the surface ends up down a little further. And I'll play that back so you can see what I did here. So it just animates down and it bounces up just a, just a little bit. All right, so we got our animation going now. I took this floor plane, which you can see it has an, a fair amount of geometry and it has a little bit of thickness too. I really only want to crack in this area probably like around this area here. So to save myself from calculating this entire sheet, what I did was I created my Voronoi and I made a cube in here and I'm using this cube to create a MoGraph selection in the center of it. So you can see I'm using this cube right here that has two segments, one segment and two segments. So it's giving us essentially a selection area. Then I took that and I've got this selection tag right here. That is just a selection of this area so that it compresses my my fracturing to this box only so that I don't have to calculate all the way out here. And you can see I took that and I put that MoGraph selection in here and I did a bunch of fracture bits here. But you see it's localized in this one area. You can see I have a whole bunch of point distributions and I'll show you what each one does here. So the first one I'm just cracking just straight in the center. And I'm giving myself, it gives us a little bit of breaking out here, but for the most part it's stays close to the box and you can see I have the box in here so I know where I'm, I want the crack to happen and I'm controlling that by adjusting down here. You can adjust your transform and your scale and all that stuff. You can see this is where this one is right here just in this area and then I created another one and this one is a inverse normal so what you can do is by pulling this standard deviation it'll pull the points towards the corners so that's my first breakup and it's happening directly in the corners of my box and then I I'm going to continue breaking this up some more. So I created another one and you can see this one is the same thing. It's inverse normal. It's a little further out and I'm just adding some more cracking in these areas. Still building up the bits, but not having to deal with the entire surface. And then I continue doing that. Here's one in the middle and I'm just cracking this up a little more just so that I get a more broken up edge when the box lands. Then I've got another one here that's just this area here you can see i'm adding more cracking and more breaking along the fault lines of where this would smash where the corners would hit and i did that for almost all the corners i don't believe i did one up here so there's our base setup for our voronoi and you can see how detailed this cracking is and certainly you could break this up even more if you wanted to um, but for speed sake I'm not going to do that. Our shot also will probably be from overhead, something like this. So the other thing to consider is that you need to be able to see the cracking from the angle. So I would probably set it up where you have like a light over here, casting some shadows so that you get a nice deep looking cracking. So that's the setup for the Voronoi. So now I created a plane effector and I have a few things in here. Because of fields now, I can use splines and other things. So I started out with a box and my box field essentially doing this area here and then I added three splines to my thing as well so you can see here my fall off I have these three splines and these are just cracking the corners and you can see see I turn them on see it cracks up the corners a bit and how that's set up it's just the spline you can see but inside the plane effector I drag the spline in and then I have this set to curve as our spline shape and then under here, I have it set to distance mode, set to radius, so that you can control how far from the spline center. It goes almost like if it was a, um, a sweeped object or something like that. So I set up all four corners with a spline. So you can see, here's my cracking. The next thing I did was I, I animated this plane to match the animation of our other plane. So when this slams down, see it hits. 
That was one other thing I did. Created a plane just underneath this as a Dynamax catcher. You can see I took this plane and I pulled the center down so that it would sink in the center, but as it went out, it wouldn't fall very far. And that's because I'm adding some dynamics to the to the breaking up. So how I did that is I created a dynamics tag in here. I set this to add velocity peak. And what that does is as soon as a plane effector activates the Vernoy fracture, it instantly becomes a dynamic object and it falls into this gully i would i'm gonna say of of this shape underneath so as this falls down and cracks these these things these planes are sitting on the surface down here we got our base thing set up here i'm gonna play it back so we can see it cracking So the next thing I'm going to do is let's get started doing some particle work and prettying this up. So I created this new scene and it has all my animations set up in it. And I've got several particle emitters. I'll show you what each one does. To start off with, I'm emitting, I've got a box because this is a box. So I'm emitting from that box shape. Certainly you could use like a circle, but for our purposes and the look I was trying to go for, I'm just using a box. And this first one is basically just the really little bit heavier bits that are going to fly off and land on the surface, leaving almost like a sandy feel to the surface. So you can see here, this one's the, this. It's easier to see when it's out further, but it just kind of shoots out and lands. And how that's created is I have the emitter set to shot, and I'm emitting right at the frame of impact, which is 38. I'm only emitting for one frame because it's shot. I'm emitting a bunch of particles, but on my surface here, I have a bunch of friction turned on in here you can see i have my friction set to like 34 i don't have a lot of bounce and then i'm using a turbulence with a box field and a drag with a box field so it doesn't have a lot of drag here in the middle but as it gets further away the drag like almost clamps it down and stops the particles from moving and then of course also i have a gravity pushing it all down so that's the first one right there so that just kind of emits and stops so next i created these two and these are just like dust clouds almost it animated almost the same way i have a little bit of slightly different setup on that one but i have all the same stuff on it except for in my modifiers i'm telling it not to use the drag so it doesn't stop i'm not using the gravity so it just kind of flies off and i'm not using turbulence one which is this one here because this one belongs to this guy down here and i'll show you why that is but so this one this is all this does it just kind of shoots out and certainly i can play with this a little more to get more streakiness to it or whatever but i'm pretty happy with that look again this is just like a dusty thing then i made this last one here and this one is just an overall big dust cloud and that just kind of sells the fact that this thing is impacting and then i have the particles dying off really pretty quickly i think 20 frames or something like that so that they hit and it like shoots way out and then they just like slowly dissipate and then i made an explosion effects which is this guy here if i go back to explosion i turn this guy on so i made a box obviously it's not super big, but it's big enough to contain my explosion for the most part. And I'll show you what that does. So I'm using the same smoke setup. You know, it's shooting out, it's using shot, and it's shooting out a bunch of particles. And those particles have fuel in them, so that explosion is using them to burn. And that's how I'm going to be creating my smoke. You can see this just shoots down, and it's going to slow down a bit here, but here you go. You can see. And I think at render time, I'm going to make this only smoke. And all of this is always just layering up the effects so that at the end you get that feel of like that big impact. And obviously all the particles, the little thin small particles that you were looking at earlier, have to be rendered out with motion blur. Because otherwise they're just dots and it doesn't make sense. So that's it for the cinema portion. I'm going to go in, set up a bunch of renders, and I'll see you inside of After Effects to comp this all together. Alright, so we're going to take a look at how I comp this together. I separated my renders into a few passes. Let's start with the ground plane. So you can see this is what the ground plane looks like. That's straight out of the render. I rendered this out of redshift and I added a little bit of extra displacement at render time. So that's what that looks like. And then here are the rocks. And I had to remap the timing on the rocks. Took it and I remapped it so that it actually 
the action happened happened a little faster because when I throw the logo on top of this, you'll see that it just it felt weird slow. So that's why it is like that. So I just time remapped that and I didn't do anything else to it. And then I put a second layer of rocks and I kept those close just to add a little bit of breakup around the edge. And it's the same thing you can kind of see. They just kind of stay there. Now, ultimately, if this was client work, I would go back and like break this up a little bit so that it wasn't so just all kind of out here. It was just like closer together. Um, versus adding a second layer, but we're going to cover all this stuff up anyway. So then I added the fine dust, and then the fine dust is, this is what that looks like. And again, I time remapped it a little bit, and I have two effects in here. I have a levels, and I'm adjusting the alpha so you can, so it's more visible. And then I just have a fill on it. So I'm just kind of tinting it a little bit of gray. So let me show you what those two, those two, three things look like. So there's that. You see we're already starting to layer this on top of each other. All right. And then here's the smoke, and I kind of do duplicated this a few times and dropped it in and remapped it a little bit. Here's a time remap here and I did a little bit of scale and I'm adjusting the exposure as well. Right, you can watch now. Let me show you what that looks like. You can see this one's really, really thin. I have it set to not have a lot of transparency because again, we're layering on top of this stuff. So and then I added another smoke on top of that one without any transparency added to it. You can kind of see now we've got this. You can see we're kind of layering all of this stuff up. And then next, I dropped the logo on top of that. And on the logo, I added a few things. I added deep glow to give me a nice glowing center here. And I added real smart motion blur, but I don't have that on this computer currently. So here's where we are now. So then I added a few more layers of smoke in varying positions and whatnot. So like this one, I'm kind of rotating a little bit and scaling up and that's just right here on top and then this one is the same it's here and it's just also being scaled up and then i have this last one here that's kind of on top so you can kind of get this feel of boom and then I added a final fine dust pass on top of that. Let's see now, boom. You can see that, that flash of dust shooting out right as that impacts. So then I added on top of everything, I added a transform. And this is how I'm gonna do my camera shake. And I'm just here, I'm just adjusting the skew, the skew axis and the scale. So, and I added this extra scale right at the beginning to just give it an, a little bit of extra impact. Since this is motion blurred, you won't notice that I'm scaling it down and it just adds a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra impact. And then as a final step, I added a little depth of field and I'm doing that with just a gradient on a shape layer. So it's not an actual depth of field, it's just a faux one, but it adds to the look. And again, if this was client work, I'd probably go in and build a couple more elements and adjust the cracking a little bit more and probably add a little bit of extra glint to the logo. Well, let me play it back. Make this as some cool sound design. All right, well, that's it for me this week. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will catch you next week. I am cutting in vlogger style because Workbench Live is coming out next week. I'm just kidding. We're going to be at the Keyframes Conference in Orlando. Next week. He's speaking. Sev will be hanging out. The panel of people is so insane that I almost want to be watching it rather than doing it. I'm telling you, these, there's, some good, there's some good people on this thing. Anyway, if you guys are anywhere near Orlando next week, to check it out. I got a link in the description below, and you can use Join Me 19 to save some money at checkout. I hope we'll see you there. Uh -huh.